the pour is done. We do have a problem though. There is a leak and we don't know how bad it's gonna be. Hey everyone, it's Dylan and Charlie from the Black Forest Wood Company. This week we're gonna be doing our largest pour ever into a single table and it ended up leaking. So you guys can see how that went. So we're just here right now. It is a Tuesday night, it's a Tuesday, uh, and we're mixing up the most resin we've ever done in a single pour before. We've used more resin in one table, but it, we broke it up into two pours. Uh, but this is going to be, I think we're doing 240 liters of resin that we've mixed up right now uh, for a single pour. We'll have to double check the math. We'll put it on the screen if I was wrong. And here is all of our resin that we've got mixed up. So in total, it's 16 buckets. Uh, there's 15 here in front of us right now. And then if you guys look over here, we've got the rest, uh, the final bucket just being degassed. And here's what we're going to be pouring today. So it's 14 foot by five foot uh, big leaf maple burl. Uh, this is one of the most incredible slabs of maple burl I've probably ever seen. So it's got burled edges, as you guys can see, going down pretty much the whole length of the piece. It's about three and a half inches thick. And then we've got these pieces down here just to fill the ends. So next we'll be adding our pigment, but this is going to be a ton of resin and the table is probably going to weigh around a thousand pounds. All right. So what we're going to do here now is just get our concentration for the dye figured out. So I'm going to start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten drops. And then Sauger's going to mix that in. What I've got here is just a plastic bulk garn cup. Uh, and I'm going to grab about three and a half inches thick worth of resin because that's the thickness of our piece. We're going to add two more drops and we'll call it that. So that means we're going to use 12 drops of pigment uh, for each of these buckets. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so there we are. All 16 buckets have their dye in them. So we'll get this all mixed up and then in the table it goes. Uh, we, of course, have an AC here to help cool this table. And then down at the other end, for the larger table, we've got water cooling. So there's our reservoir, and there's all piping that goes underneath to circulate water through there and just keep that resin cool. So I'm going to go live on Instagram, and unfortunately, we've only got one phone right now to film this with. So the content that you guys see on YouTube uh, will just be taken from the live stream. So some of it will be filmed vertically, but we'll try and crop it the best we can so it, uh, it looks normal for you guys. Um, but yeah, let, let us know, I guess. If you caught the live stream on Instagram, leave a comment below and let us know. But hopefully this goes well. This is going to be a 240 liter pour to cast this three and a half inch thick slab of big leaf maple burl. We've got everything mixed up with a clear blue resin. And let's go for it. Uh, someone's wondering uh, how we clean the buckets after we pour. So we just let everything cure up in, in the bucket and then we hit the underside with a mallet and it pops right out after. How thick is the pour? This is about three and a half inches and it is gonna be for a dining table. Have you ever sprung a leak on a large pour and how do you stop it? Um, we've had some leaks before, nothing too bad. Uh, it's just lots of silicone and that's what you gotta try to do. Uh, final weight of the table is going to be about a thousand pounds. So luckily our client has us to come deliver and we'll be able to help her out with that. Uh, what brand of resin are we using? Hi from Portland. That's Nicole. Uh, this is our Black Forest Deep Resin here. How to remove micro bubbles? We like to degas before every pour with a vacuum chamber. Why is he wearing goggles? Is he going to swim? Um, that's so if the resin splashes up, it doesn't get in his eye. All right. So hopefully you guys can hear me with the fans going. Uh, the pour is done. We do have a problem though, there is a leak and we don't know how bad it's gonna be. So right here, I'll turn that fan off, right here as you guys can see, we've got a big mess of mostly super glue and I can see epoxy is actually starting to leak out of it again. So we'll, we'll have to clean that up and put more. Um, but there's obviously, we have this seam here and there's a rip somewhere that is underneath the slab causing it to leak out. We've got epoxy draining on the floor. We've got epoxy dripping out right here. We have no idea how much this is gonna leak overnight. We're just kind of crossing our fingers that it's not too bad. Um, but we will find out in the morning if our $10,000 worth of epoxy has leaked onto the floor.
Oh, you broke it. Okay, so we've we've got the big table demolded off here, and I kind of want to explain to you guys what happened with the leak. Fortunately, as you can tell by the ground, it wasn't that bad. We did have a few drips along here. This is basically the extent of the leak. Um, but what happened is on this pour table, we use multiple sheets of HDPE, which is this white plastic here, to to achieve our size. And there's actually a seam that goes across the middle here. Uh, where the two are joined and we cover that up in tuck tape. Now when we were lifting in the slabs for this big big table uh, we set it down at the one end and we slid it back this way so probably in doing so we think we tore this tape up and it was basically just right here it got a little bit um, in between the pieces of HDPE nothing actually got underneath because of all the weight of the resin and the wood that was on top and then we got a little bit that leaked out this front edge but it could have went a lot worse. I know it was a little bit tough to sleep that night without thinking about it, but luckily we, we were all good. All right, so we just got the giant table demolded. Now we're trying to get her downstairs. So Spencer's got one end on that forklift, then we've got the other end on this cart here. And Brad is down there on the smaller forklift and he's going to catch the other end of the table, at least in theory. Go a little faster, Spence. Go faster. One inch. Yeah, a little bit. Obviously to salvage this, we didn't really have to add any extra epoxy. Luckily, as you guys saw, there wasn't very much at all that ended up leaking out. Um, so now we're at the point where we're doing our final sanding, just prepping this piece for finish. So typically we'll sand our tables to about 320 grit. Then we'll do our Black Forest Furniture Oil, which typically we're doing about two coats of that. Then we'll either use our uh, Black Forest Ceramic Base Coat or the Graphene, and then we'll top it off uh, with the Black Forest Ceramic Top Coat. Uh, but you guys are going to get to see that in next week's video. Uh, but this, this table uh, is pretty amazing so far, I do have to say. It is not fun to move around the shop. It is very, very heavy. And we're the guys who actually have to go deliver this one. So you will probably get to see that as well. Uh, but thank you for watching. Let us know if you have any questions or anything in the comments below. And we'll see you guys next week.